Holstein Meisters, um, sort of a bushcrafty prepping type video. Uh, I'll chuck in photographs I've taken already, as and when required during this video. Um, what I have here is I'm going to try and make my own uh, bushcraft kind of a knife from an old file. So I've got a few of these um, and I've drilled a few of them in preparation for making fire steels because this part of the steel hasn't been hardened. It's high carbon steel but this bit hasn't been hardened so I've, on the files I've got, I'll see if I can just dig them out. So I've drilled a few quite easy away from the hardened section of the files and I'll just take these tang bits off. Um, so I'm going to make some more of these. So this is just a, uh, a fire steel on a bright orange kind of lanyard I've made just in case you, you lose it out in the woods you know you're going to spot it quite easy. So it's just the top section of what is going to be the knife that I've just used an angle grinder to cut off. I've had it soaking in uh, white vinegar for a couple of days to remove all the rust. As I said I've taken the tang off, drilled it and I've used some gun blue in just to give it this nice well dark blue colour to it. It's a bit more pleasing on the eye than just plain old something that's quite dark anyway but you get the picture so that's something you can carry that's going to last you decades in terms of fire starting capabilities but this section um, is what I'm going to make a knife. I'd actually draw uh, I'd actually use a pen I actually kind of did the outline I don't know if you see there's like a, like a little finger cut out there um, but I made a uh, a forge which I'll chuck a picture in now out of a, a large uh, process peas tin. There's loads of videos about making mini forges, so I made a mini forge uh, using me my gas bottle and me my attachment. So I managed to heat up this section of the file, uh, let it cool naturally, to soften it, so I could drill these two holes and obviously the, the scales, which are just two pieces of a dowel from um, An old windbreak. So we've got some old windbreaks up here with the various dowels, and some of them I don't know what kind of wood it is, but some of them got like a bit of a red tinge to them. So, it's, so when you, when I've cut it, there's this nice little red look to them. So obviously when I've finished up, them it, might, it should look quite nice. And then I'll, I'll uh, oil it or stain it or whatever. I don't know. So yeah, I used the mini forge to heat that up, so I could soften it, so I could drill through it. I don't know what I'm going to use to pin it yet. I've not really got anything suitable. What we do with the brass? I uh, could do with some brass rods or something. I don't know. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So, what I want to do today, because I'm rattling on, is just shape this back end a bit. Cut this section off here for the blade. Cut that little section out there for like, a, for like your finger to kind of go in as you're holding it. And then try and make a bit of a bevel. On both sides for the for the blade. So that's what I'm planning to do right now, anyway, because uh, the in-laws are out, so I've got access to the garage. So I'll dig out the angle grinder and the transformer, and away we'll go. So uh, I'll catch you in a second. I've got the old safety goggles on. Uh, let's fire up the old angle grinder. Just take this section off first for the point of the blade. Steel's been obviously softened with the, uh, the mini forge, so it should be too bad cutting. Here we go.
Uh, so I'm just cut out the finger now. I'll touch that up with the, uh, can you see that? I'll touch that up with the uh, grinding disc in a bit. I'm just going to take these, these corner pieces off now, round it round a bit. A couple of little triangles and then I'll grind it in a minute. Swapped over to a grounding wheel now. So I'll just uh, tidy up these bits now. I'm not aiming for a masterpiece here folks and I'll use the sanding disc in a bit just to tidy them up. I will be leaving all these uh, these file pieces on, I'm not going to grind all that down, I don't, make it, you know, I don't want to make it too thin the steel. I'm just going to grind out this little portion here next.
a bit misshapen, but never mind. Finger size is that? Almost done. That's almost the basic shape now. I'm just going to just going to bring this point down a little bit. Just put a little bit of a curve on this top edge. But uh, kind of getting there, folks. We're getting there, folks. I shall carry on. Yeah, that way around. the sort of shape I'm going for. I'm going to tidy up the, uh, the grooves on the top and the bottom, leave them all on here and then I'll, uh, I'll put the, uh, the Beverly thing in, whatever you call it. I've taken the, uh, the, the, the ridges off the uh, edges of the, the knife. I've, done, I've roughly shaped one side of the blade the angle grinder so you can see the thickness there or well, if you can see it but the thickness there is roughly half of what it is here so now I can flip it over in the vise and start working on this side now but I'll cut all that bit out and I'll come back in a bit <coughs> all right so I've done both sides roughly now with the angle grinder uh, if you look down the I don't know if you're going to see that very well if you look down the, uh, the blade edge it's fairly straight and I put a flap disc on now and just tidy up a bit more then I might put a polishing disc up depending on how I feel it's not brilliant but we'll see how we go the camera's been moving uh, so I've just finished with the flap disc and um, 
the blade's fairly straight. I'll go with a flat disc all the way over, just take out most of the grinding marks all around the edges. So I'm going to put a, a polishing disc on now and just try and bring a bit of a, more of a shine up to it. So I've got the polishing disc on, it's well worn but give it a go. Bad. Not brilliant, but not bad. Right, I'll move on to the next step now then folks, which is dropping it. Hey folks, it's, um, it's probably about 3-4 hours since the last portion of the video when I was doing the knife. Uh, I think I last left it with the, uh, the bevels polished up, the angle grinder, but now I've, I've done a proper job, or a much better job anyway. I've got the files out, they're all hidden underneath here smaller file and, and loads of cheapo crappy sandpaper and I've I've done it much better. I've got a couple of low spots you can just see there that I've not managed to send out or file out. Well I could eventually but I've just you know getting a bit uh, tired after three four hours of doing this. So I've had it in the file uh, I've had it in the vise and I've gone up and down with the file and then I've wrapped uh, a couple of different grades of sandpaper around, one of the scales, one of the one of the things. And I've just gone up and down the bevel. I don't know if you can tell with the reflection, it's a lot flatter than it was after I'd left it polished up with the uh, angle grinder. You can see the couple of low spots there. It'll take a lot more sanding in that to get them out, and I'm not that bothered. But what I am impressed with is, I mean it's a nice shine. I'm impressed with is the uh, the straightness of the the blade. I'm trying to see if you can look down it. It's not. I don't know if it's really picking it up. It really picking it up. It's not a bad. I mean, for me, for the first attempt at making a knife, I think that's that's a pretty good job, really. So, a bit more stuff to do now, obviously, but I might leave that for another day now because I'm absolutely shattered. So, uh, catch you all later, folks. Bye for now.